Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be exploring Animal Kingdom. I have some really interesting shots to share with you, and I tried some different perspectives and even took my camera on one of the fast rides, and so I want to really dive in and let's explore Animal Kingdom with a 24 millimeter lens. I said in the previous episode that I really feel like the entrance of Animal Kingdom is pretty special because it eases you into the park and it gives you a lot of wildlife and it's not grandiose like what you might experience at Disneyland or Magic Kingdom or Epcot. There's nothing big in front of you. Instead, you're able to just take in some wildlife. And I think that's really important. It really sets the mood for the adventure that you're going to go on in this park. And in my day job as a psychologist, I would call that anchoring. It really anchors you right at the beginning of the park and it primes you and so that you have a sense that you're in nature and so I think it's important to capture a few pictures of this area. You can always take a picture of the big tree, the tree of life but I actually think the Tree of Life makes a pretty good backdrop if you can get a good foreground subject. In reality, foreground makes everything better, even if you're taking a picture of the gift shop. All of the Disney parks have such amazing and intricate detail, but Animal Kingdom, I think, takes it up a step. I feel like no matter where you are in the park, if you just take a moment and stop and look around, you're going to find some amazing details. And a lot of these are photogenic. What I was seeing right here is just the good contrast of shapes, textures, colors, styles. It was just something that captured my attention, and if it captures my attention, I feel like it's worthy of a photograph. My family has a butterfly garden, and we actually have a butterfly garden that we keep up at the elementary school, and so it's always fun to see our little pollinator friends. Now since this is a street photography series, then I think it's always important to capture some pictures of people, and especially capturing people in their element. And at Disney parks, a lot of time, that's them resting and recovering, maybe checking their phones. They could be on social media, they could be planning the rest of their day, they could just be looking at a fun video, maybe watching one of my videos, who knows. No, I like to go camping. My kids like camping. I wish I was more of a camper, but it's really fun seeing these airstreams, and I think it's so iconic, so classic. And even if it's old and dented and rusty like this one, which is intentional, you know, I think it's still a very photogenic piece of hardware.
Now we're getting to our dinosaur area of the park, and so we'll see if there's some good signs and foliage and see if we can even find a friend. Now you notice I'm shooting kind of at a distance, and this is a wide-angle lens. This is a 22 or a 24 millimeter, and so in order for me to get some depth, I have to get really close to my foreground. Unfortunately for me, there's a lot of foreground to be found in this area. Now I'm not going to ride the dinosaur ride today, but we'll see if there's some good shots to be had out and about. Now there's a shot here of a dinosaur spewing water out of its mouth and I was kind of conflicted on what the focal point should be because typically if there's a subject with eyes you want the eyes to be in focus but in this case it seems like the water I thought it was a better effect to focus on the water and so I'd be curious to know what you think in the comments below do you think that was the right focus or should it have been the eye And here we have Dino Rama. If you haven't been recently, then there are some changes that are in the works right now. It's hardly recognizable if you went pre-pandemic. I think there will be a lot of improvements and it'll be a great part of the park. It's perhaps a little bit eerie seeing this part of the park not as lively as it could be, but I think that when they're done with all their construction, then it'll be a big draw, and I think there's going to be a lively crowd once again. I feel like right here there's just so much character, so much texture and contrast both in colors as well as a balance of industry and nature that I just want to take some pictures. I don't even know exactly what my subject is or how I'm framing the subject. I just feel like I need to, I need to take some pictures here. And then of course across the way, Everest is a clear subject, and so if you can capture it with some good clouds, then you might get lucky.
Here I'm going to try and capture some leading lines as well as the contrast between the dark foreground and the sky and see if I can come up with a good composition. Now there aren't a whole lot of doorways or window frames that make for natural framing for the composition at the Disney parks, but occasionally you'll see an archway that you could use. Now as a single rider, it would make more sense to go through the single rider line, but I think that just going through the regular standby line, there are a lot of artifacts and ample opportunities for amazing photos. So we're going to take the scenic route this time. The GoPro doesn't handle low light so well. It's more of an action camera that I'm getting the video on. But I think that there's still a lot of... I wouldn't call this area authentic necessarily, but it's very intriguing, I would say. I can't verify the authenticity of the artifacts here because I'm not from that area of the world and haven't been there, but it's very interesting to walk through. We're going to get a little bit sneaky and see if we can capture some pictures in the slots here. You'll notice a lot of people passing me in the line and I was telling people, go around me. I'm just, I'm just a tourist here, just enjoying the scenery. They weren't being rude at all. And again, I won't show too much of the footage from this portion of the line, just because low light's not the best for the GoPro, but I was able to take a few pictures, and so we'll go through those. And now we're up. I usually don't go on rides when I'm doing these POV videos, although it would be interesting doing a POV of just rides. But in this case, I decided, uh, let me get on the ride and I'm gonna keep my camera out. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots from the ride Everest. I would hashtag this collection of photos probably camera death grip. I was hanging on pretty tight to my equipment.
There you have just a moment to take this picture while the tracks are changing and I think it turned out pretty well. I think I'll use it for my thumbnail for this video. I edited some of this down because you don't want to see 30 seconds of black as we're traveling in the dark cave. So here locally we call this the Disco Yeti because the Yeti doesn't move so to give it that effect of you know something interesting then they have a strobe light. Now I wasn't thinking there were any other pictures to take on this ride but then I saw the mist and I quickly pulled the camera out again and was lucky to get a couple of pretty magical shots I think. So you can see the sun's starting to get a bit low, but I think there's still a lot of shots to take and you're going to start seeing the park clear out. As today I was one of the last people to leave, I feel. Now this shot here I had to plant myself for about a minute before somebody came, but eventually somebody walked by. At Disney, even the trash cans are epic, and I'm not just making that up because I took a picture of one just now, but they even have salt and pepper shakers of some of the different trash cans from around the different parks. They're iconic and collectible, apparently. That second shot of the tower was a bit of post-production liberty, I think. Here's another camera death grip shot. I feel like I want to get really close to this water. 
Let's get the shot, but not sacrifice my equipment to do so. And I feel like I should have adjusted the focal length of that last picture, but it was starting to get late and I still had some other areas that I wanted to walk through before I ended the day. I may go back to that shot next time. <coughs> I'm not much of a culinary person, but I think that sieve has seen better days. The Yak and Yeti is a fun restaurant. I went there for my birthday several years ago. I need to come back. Now this little gazebo, or whatever we call it, it caught my attention because of the contrast. I actually backtracked in order to get this shot. Now this shot seems a little bit busy, I don't know what I was looking for, but then somebody walked into the frame and it ended up being great. And I'm really glad because that ended up being a good subject. At Animal Kingdom, even the bathroom doors and the payphones, the, I don't even know if the payphones work, they make great subjects. Now here's a good shot. I'm going to take two shots of the Tree of Life. And I think actually it's a better shot than when you first walk into the park because you really get it in a natural element. And I think it's very underrated. Most people take the picture from the front of the park, but come around to the back here and I think you'll get a superior shot from this vantage point. Here's my second shot. You don't miss any detail. In fact, I think there's more detail on the back end of the tree than the front. And you get all that nature, the foliage. I think it's just a really great angle.
trying to take a clandestine picture of this worker, but I think he saw me. So making my way to the front of the park at the end of the day, the crowds are thinning out, but unfortunately I'm also getting a little fatigued as well. So I'm going to hustle and find my way to the exit. Thank you so much for joining me, and here are the last few pictures that I took. <laughs> 